Hello and welcome to today's special episode of Flight of Freedom and... And Te con Manzanilla. <laughs> Carla and I are doing this episode together because we both were mums, still are mums, with whilst living in an eating disorder and it's something that isn't really discussed very often. Yes. In fact, I don't really think it's discussed at all particularly, is it? And it, it is a big part of life. It affects, as anyone with an eating disorder knows, it affects every single aspect of life. And, I mean, throughout my children's lives until I recovered, my eating disorder was affecting them in many, many, many ways. Carla, would you say a similar thing? I I agree with you in all in all that you say because um yeah it's something that is not talking I don't know it's like um I always find like the people and I kind of understand I don't know you maybe understand why because it's very painful and it's very um yeah very private sometimes this eating disorder but it's sad because you can find so many women in that sometimes like hiding this and living in the hell of anorexia, bulimia, or binge eating um, by a solidity, by themselves, but being parenting too. So it's yeah. a terrible fight that always is in your mind because for one side it's like you really know that you are not doing okay in your mind, in your relation with your body and with the food. But in the other part, you are so freaking worried about don't do the same with your kids. Yes. Because I always say, like, we are not crazy. I mean, the people that live in eating disorder, it's not like we don't thought. We thought. We have thoughts. We have things. We have a mind, functional mind. And we understand that what I, what we are doing could affect our kids. And that's hell. <laughs> yes, I agree. Totally. And... Sometimes for me, I was putting eating disorder behaviors onto my children. Yes. Because I believed I was doing the right thing, particularly when I was going like very deeply into orthorexia and my children had everything homemade from scratch, from like natural ingredients and nothing processed. And society makes you think that that's the right thing. Yes. Society makes you think that what you're doing is exactly how children should be brought up. But, okay, so yes, there is a level of children having food that nourish their bodies, but it's a balance, isn't it? And it's not, that doesn't mean eliminating all other foods, which is what, I did. And I used to, one of my sons used to go to children's parties. And when I used to go and pick him up, the parents would say, oh, he's just been at the food table the whole time because literally it was the only time he got crisps and sweets and biscuits and stuff because he never got that stuff at home. Because in my mind, it was bad for him. And did you tell something when the mom told you, like, when he goes to your car, did you tell something about, like, oh, you eat everything, or did you make some commentaries about it? Um, I didn't have the confidence. I was so scared of doing wrong, saying wrong. I was I was a very, very, very anxious person, um, which I now know wasn't isn't me. I'm not a very, very anxious person. That was all part and parcel of the eating disorder. Well, you are the most calm person that I know now. <laughs> 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 if I if I thought in calmness and peaceful is you now, <laughs> which is amazing, it's possible, right? Yeah. It, it's, yeah. I always thought I was a very, very anxious person and that also affected my children. Of course. Um, I was constantly worried about everything all the time. And I think one of one of the things I, I'm not going to say it's a regret because I can't change the past and I can't look back and say, 
I should have done this, I should have done that, because that's not going to achieve anything. It's not going to change the past. But one thing that I think about that makes me feel a little bit sad is that I was so busy all the time, busy doing, 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 cleaning, cooking, making everything from scratch, exercising, everything, that I never took time to just be with my children, to just enjoy them being children. I was a busy mum, busily looking after them, making sure everything was as perfect as it can be. But yeah. I didn't take time to appreciate them. Yes. And now you say perfect. And that's, I agree with you because we want to be the perfect moms and the perfection and the white and think that is always in our parenting, right? Like it's not just about food or talking about food. It's a well about our behaviors and our about our feelings, our sensations, how we parenting. And I used to be very anxious all the time. And now my kids are teenagers. They are not grown up still. So I can see in them, as you say, not a regret, but yes, I accept like a lot of part that I can see in them is because it, um, I was, I was in that moment. My, one of my little kids are, is more anxious than the other. And I thought I live with her more time in a deep anorexia than with the others, honestly, thinking that like, since she borns, I was, I having more crisis, anorexia crisis, like going deep more times mm -hmm. than the oldest. So my little daughter experienced a different mom than the others because I was very engaged in anorexia most of her life, yeah. even if she didn't notice. But then her mom is, was always busy, always anxious, always making comments, not to her, but yes, to all the people and trying to uh, restrict whatever they can restrict doing exercise. And I can see her now. And it's not about feel guilty, but yes, feel responsible about what you can do. I mean, or know what you can do, like where until where the eating disorder can impact. Not it's just you, not it's just the family. It could impact very deep in so many ways. Yes. You mentioned comments there. Can you talk more about what you mean about comments? Well, comments like around, you know, like um, maybe judging other people, of course, like in a loud voice. Like, oh, I can't believe they can eat that or I can't believe they cannot do this. Or comments even because... I don't know in your culture, but at least here in Latin America, it's very common make comments about the bodies of the others. Like, you don't have these thoughts that you cannot comment, like in private, but comment in family. Or I can't believe that mom don't take care of that boy because he's fat. Like, literally, that yes. kind of comment. Yeah. Or I get what you mean. about the parenting of the other. I can't believe that mom give that to or put that in the lunch for, yes. for the kids. And, but the kids, listen yes they do <laughs> um i also used to comment about my own body in a negative way and put myself down in front of my children yes and not realizing the impact that I could have on them and how they could learn to be mean to themselves through me being mean to myself yes and they little ears pick up so much don't they and, and, it's... and we put the standard very t like your standard is very high and i mean i feel they can feel pressure too even like they don't understand in that moment if they are little what kind of pressure in this but for sure imagine that little things growing with a mom that is anxious that is always pending of everything it's not just about the body it's like why they do? I be very focusing. They have the best play. They had the best toys. They had the best everything, and the best mom. And even if I had work, I need to. I remember. I okay. I'm going to work hour to hour, and then I'm going to be present with them. But 
it was impressive. Like I had to play with them. It's like I had to play with them because I want to be the best mom. So I'm going to take everything apart, sit down with them, play with them. Then I put it to bed and I sleep nothing because I has to continue working. But I want to be the best mom playing with them because and I was anxious too. Mm. In all these comments about I need to work, I need to hurry, hurry up. We have this time to this time to play. Hurry up, we have this time to this thing. Like, oh my God, his their world was always anxious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so much anxiety. And I think that does rub off as well on the children. They become they pick up the anxiety, they become worried about timings, they become worried about having everything done, or they can go the other way and be really rebelling against it. Yes. And I, I do, so much of how I used to live my life and how I feel and felt about things is so totally different now and it's amazing how having an eating disorder, the eating bit is just the small part of it. It affects every aspect of your life, everything. Every, every, everything. It's like you have lens. This lens that you cannot see the world like the world it is. <laughs> and it affects everything. I mean, your kids now are grown ups, right? Most of them. Yes. Mm -hmm my kids not but we still have situations um teenager situations that is coming i think it's normal teenager situations uh but i can't imagine how will how will support them if i have an eating disorder right now it's very challenging i'm not saying it's not challenging it's challenging teenager is challenging and it's sometimes it's like I feel overwhelmed. I'm not going to like deny it. Oh, I'm the, um, it's so easy. It's not. It's but not easy know. to have teenagers. No, it's not. Yeah. But now with an eating disorder, I am a, like a real complete mom with real struggles, not an eating disorder mom with struggle that is completely different. I don't know if whoever is listening to me, that makes sense. But I mean, if I was an eating disorder, maybe I would impress and maybe I would escape from, I don't know, I'm going to run, I'm going to be all the time in the gym, I, I will not, I restrict more. I don't know, like just to try to settle up all these feelings that come in with the challenges of teenager kids. I just want to, and now I need to sit down and feel that feelings, <laughs> feel the fear, feel the they worry about having them feel all this and just know that I can't control all the things <laughs> I need yeah. to let them grow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. How did you find having feelings it, when your children were younger? It's like what I mean is so at the end of, first school here when each of my children finished first school there was like a leavers assembly where all these little children stood on stage and sang this beautiful song and all the mums were sat there crying and it was like a very moving thing and I was the only mum every time sat there with a face like stone completely dry eyed not feeling anything wow wow i was crying <laughs> I, I i i can cry with my kids because i feel so guilty like i never feel enough so every time that that mom is came is like i am not i'm not a good mom for you i'm not deserve you that was always um in my mind like i not deserve you you are because they were so little and well I always work with kids. That's another thing. Like I always work with kids. So it's a stage like, um, I love it since, since, um, I think that's really my personal. I love that stage. So I work in education so many years. So looking my own kids was this, I always like, okay, 
I know what I need to do or I what's the theory need tell you know, right? Like what's the correct things to do in parenting? I know everything. I read a lot of books. I know it, but I'm not doing it. And that feel of guilt is like always like, okay, you don't deserve me because even worse, I know it. It's not like I didn't know. I know what I need to do. I'm not I'm not doing it. Because my thoughts white and black. So I cry a lot. I cry a lot, but it's like this crying about not because just love them, of course I love them, but it's because I feel so how how you can say it, like so unworthy of having it. That's the word, unworthy. Mm -hmm. mm. I get that. I felt I felt like a terrible mum all the time. Um especially with like the assemblies when all the other mums were crying and I, I just wasn't feeling, but I didn't allow myself to feel ever. Did your kids never. ask you like, mom, why you don't cry or mom, why did they Do you know what? Them? No, not when they were little, but when they became sort of like older teenagers and started to get girlfriends and stuff, because my children are all three are boys and they used to come in and they used to go, oh, my girlfriend was crying again today. Why do these girls cry so much? You never cry, mum. Why do they have to cry all the time? And they thought there was something wrong with the girlfriends because they cried all the time. Whereas actually it was me. And I, because of growing up with a mum that they never had ever seen cry because I didn't cry for 40 years. Wow. They thought... It was strange that these girls cried when in actual fact that's totally normal yeah and so it kind of skewed their view of what girls were actually like because i was so i i say unfeeling on the outside yes inside i was dying but on the outside i i must have appeared so unfeeling well that that's i don't know like i print your situation and how would you say it before how much impact the eating disorder like you cannot imagine how much this is going to i mean the little um arms or the eating disorder growing everywhere everywhere mm. and in every side and maybe it's something that you say i don't know if you read a book about eating disorders they never going to tell you how much they are going to impact in your kids until you go out of the eating disorder because that's the thing that like you just still in the eating disorder you never will see yeah the impact until you go out and see wow this stupid <laughs> crazy freaking horrible eating disorder made me lost all of this and impact in so many ways yeah wow. that's when why it's my, generational right yeah when my youngest son was like a toddler he believed and this is this is on me this is totally on me and how i talked about healthy eating all the time and they must have healthy food and it's they don't want to eat this so-called junk and stuff and he believed that if he had anything a piece of chocolate a sweet or anything he had to go and have a piece of fruit to make up for it to try and balance it out mm. oh which is heartbreaking and so cute at the same time yes they are so pure and they will take everything yes yeah. and it's it's incredible i told my my two other kids when well, the middle one is boy i had two cards the middle one is now he's a uh, already a teenager but i can see in him now all these my thoughts are coming in him so i have i'm i can see i mean now i'm healthy but he picks so many thoughts like doing exercise is good doing a lot of obsessive errors so sometimes i found him like very obsessed to i want to make a strong I, like so i had to go and talk to him right but that thought that coming from me i I know I am I generate that thought. Of course it's the culture, of course it's also the society. Of course I'm not going to put everything on me, but he has an example. And I'm not yes. going to deny 
that I have some, or he has some reason to thought in that way. And in so many ways, he made so many comments about um, people, fat people, which is very, it's very hard now for me to like, listen to him say that kind of things because I am in the other part. Yes. But I was a creator of that dot. <laughs> yeah, that's hard. And it is hard. It's my hard. boys are a lot better now at that sort of thing, but they did go through that. And yeah, I used to make comments. I used to say things about that that people needed to eat less and all this sort of thing because I was ignorant yes. of the fact that diets and stuff don't work and that actually it's diet culture that causes eating disorders a lot, not, not causes, but exacerbates. And I didn't and know any better. And we put so many more out in, in health, which is not yes. okay. Yeah. And I didn't know any better. And yeah, I put that on my kids. Mm -hmm. And it's not okay. It is not okay because they are going to be part of the world and they are going to be part of the society. And we don't, we don't want they, like, they keep that tax in our society I, I mean whatever we can do now and it's not to put so much stress with the people that already have eating disorder right now because maybe someone is listening to us and they are parenting and they have an eating disorder it's not like putting another stress to you if you mm -hmm. are there I mean it's on the other way like it's another reason that you can recover because it's not sometimes when you are parenting it's not just about you it's about your other generations and when you can find the freedom of yourself you freedom your family for keep these thoughts forever and ever yeah i i can and i'm sure you can do the same i can honestly hand on heart say that i tried to be the very best mum i could possibly be and i can look back and i can see a lot of things i did that would not I certainly wouldn't do them now because I know different things now, but then I only knew what I knew. Yes. And so I'm not, I'm not angry at myself. I'm not blaming myself. I'm not going to wallow in the past and say, I should have done this. I should have done that because all that's going to do is make me feel miserable. Of course. But I am owning the things that I now know were not ideal, were not okay. And I'm saying to my kids, I'm sorry that the eating disorder affected you. And I'm sorry that I said those things, did those things, created those thoughts. They're not okay. And I would love for you to look at them as not being okay now that I can give you the knowledge that I now have. Yes, that's really important, Julia. That's really important because first, we, we don't need to blame it, blame ourselves more that we already blame <laughs> because eating disorder. It's a trap. Um, and in the other side, it's like, go and talk with your kids about it. If you are in this process, it's good. They have like, they will understand because I don't know what age have every every kids right that the people that are our listeners but um every kid in every age understand understand in different form and different ways so if you go and talk with them about your eating disorder and your process in recovery <clears throat> they will understand and they will feel also part of you more and it, yes. it's so liberating also when you have this conversation with them uh because it's a reason now for you or they understand why you behave in that way or why you thought in that way. And as now with me, I can see them so many, so many thoughts. I already thought that they pick it from me, 
but now because they know what I'm doing and they knew my process and they knew and I share with them, we can have a honest conversation about it. And I can talk with them. You know what? I know I teach you that. Or you know what? I used to think that that, but I'm learning and I am um, reading and I am experiencing too these new things. So you can try it too. You can try to do it. And I think leaving the white and thought, white and black mentality, it's so helpful now because yeah. they will develop their own minds. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing that I used to think and the not crying and stuff was all part of this. I used to think that I had to, that the image I gave my children of me had to be strong. I had mm -hmm. to be put together. I could never show them if I was scared or worried or I thought I had to be completely having everything together all the time and never, never look like there was anything wrong or act like there was anything wrong. And certainly never admit that there was anything wrong or that I was scared or that I was upset or anything like that or that I was struggling in any way. And it's only since my recovery that I have learned that actually showing vulnerability is the strongest thing you can ever do. Mm. And that if your children, if you allow your children to see you that you're not perfect, it's showing them that it's okay to not be perfect because they can't be, you can't be, I can't be because human beings aren't perfect. Yes. I think teach them that. I mean, give you a lifesaver because they are humans and they will experience, even if they don't want it, they will experience that vulnerability. I mean, since they born, they experience vulnerability, right? And we need to like embrace them to encourage this vulnerability in in the way that feels nourished for them, you know? Like, and yes, I agree totally with you because we we always want to be this strong woman. Someone asked me this week if I was nourishment if I was nourished myself during my pregnancies, I say, I totally didn't. I totally didn't because in that moment, what I want to be is like this strong woman that doesn't feel anything, that they can still work out, they can still work until the last day of the pregnancy. I mean, nothing yeah. is, nothing is bother her, like, you know, and also controlling my weight because I remember in that moment, I just, I gained weight, but, very controlling way like everything controlling like everything i knows what happened every week to the baby i want to hear the baby every time like control even the pregnancy inside i and i think not nourishment so, i mean going and feeling tired and go to rest that was like a forsaken <laughs> myself <laughs> it was horrible like no i can do that that is for weak women i'm very strong yes yeah and what we even if we're not saying things with words no. like the never allowing yourself to rest i never allowed myself to rest so the message i was giving my children and i didn't know this at the time no. but the message was you can't rest it's bad to sit down it's lazy to sit down and it's not true it is not it is not true it is not true and my, so children, my second baby when he born he barely can sleep in that moment i wasn't think it was because me now i think it's what because me because he felt it since the womb and he can't fell asleep it was so difficult the first two years because obviously he slept but he slept oh he fell asleep crying because he resist going to sleep mm. And I was wondering all the time why. Now I know why. Because moms, since he since he was in the womb and born, never rest. Yes. Yeah. And then you just end up 
you're overtired, your children are overtired, and nobody can function properly yes. if they're not rested. Yes. And there, there is a whole societal culture of needing to be busy, needing to be perfect, needing to do this amount of steps to have this type of food and it puts a lot of pressure on when you're just trying to do the best you can yes and somebody who is living in an eating disorder tries even harder to do the best they can of course and we cannot close our eyes because even now the message of parenting it's very privileged sometimes because not all the parents not all the parents have the time to prepare things in the scratch not all the parents can go to the market and buy organic things not all the parents yeah. can't um prepare a lunch for the kids not all the parents can sit down at night and read a book for the boy not all the parents and that message that um if you are not doing it, you are not doing uh, the correct parenting, you are not a correct mom, you are not the best, but that, it's very, um, it's very, um, how do you say, like, unfair. It is. As, as my, uh, I can tell you here in, in Latin America, the parents needs to work sometimes extra hours to bring money to the family so they can support the kids. It's not like I issue about they are overworking. Sometimes it's a real necessity. Yes. And hearing this message like, okay, you need to go and play with your kid. You need to, you know what? You need to create lunches, funny lunches with faces and make and this comparison. Then you need to go to the school. Then you need to read. Then you need to blah, 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 blah. blah are full of rules again. Yes. And the only thing that they can do is work, like wake up early, leave drop this drop the kids in the school pick them up and go to bed is the only thing that i can do in this moment that's okay that's yeah. okay 100 percent. it there is women particularly are under so much pressure to do it all to be the parent to be the wife to be the mum, to be the like, successful businesswoman to to do everything, to have the perfect house, to create the school cookies for the summer fair, to be on the parent teacher association, to to do, to be to everything on and on and on and on and on. And nobody can do it all. And it's okay to say no, which wow, that's something I never did. Yes, that's hard. <laughs> Learning yeah. to say no. And to have boundaries. To have boundaries. Wow. That's that's a big issue, the boundaries. <laughs> I yes. mean oof, say no. I mean, all these things that you said with an eating disorder is exponential worse. <laughs> yes. So it's not like never is an option. If someone come and say, Oh, do you want to do the cookies? It's not an option. You will say, yes, yes, I can do it. I don't know if I'm going to sleep yeah. or not, but I'm going to do it. And it's going to be perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. Even if I have to do it four times to make it perfect and be up all night. Yes. It's going to be perfect and it's going to be on time because yes. you cannot be on time. Like if you say it's seven, it's going to be six, 40, the cookies are going to be ready, ready to go in a perfect bath, even if you don't ask. And... That's okay. And that feels safe. That feels like you are really um, doing the correct thing and success. And it's a safe place in that moment, but it's encourage you to continue in these behaviors, obsessive behavior about eating that coming with an eating disorder for one reason. And the other is the boundary. Like saying no is so hard. Saying no to anyone, to your husbands, to your kids. Yeah. to your friends, to anyone, is so hard. And trying to please everybody. everybody. And also when you do the cookies, you do all the things and you don't say no and you only let the children have the so-called healthy food and all that, 
the validation from other mm. people <laughs> makes you believe that what you're doing is right. Yes. That this doing, doing, doing all the time and working yourself to the bone and never resting. And people say, oh, you're you're doing so well. You're so amazing. Oh, aren't you a good mum? Oh, aren't you a good cook? Oh, you're so good to only feed your children organic whole foods. And aren't you so good to be doing all this exercise as well as being a busy mum and as well as working? And it makes you feel like, you're doing the right thing. Yeah, make you pride of yourself. Yes. Make you pride. And because the people also like not tell you in secret. They pull you out the group and tell everybody, oh, can you see like even making more public how wonderful mom and people are you because you do all these things. Yes. And you put your your needs aside. Because yeah, they talk completely aside. Completely it's not even aside. that you put them last, is it? You're pushing them aside. You're not aside. meeting your own needs. And at you are all. and the people are proud, like proud of you, are proud of you because you put your needs aside. What in the world? I mean Yeah. And that feels encourage you to continue, right? To continue doing the same. Yes. But on and the put other the side standard thing. up. Because if one sorry, because if one day you did that cookies next time you will you need to do it better than yes. the other time but on the other side of that you're also showing your children by your actions that it's okay to never say no it's okay to not have boundaries that you're there to serve others all the time and not meet any of your own needs yes and that's not what we want for our children no we That's, want them to be able to meet their own needs. Yes. And, oh my God, Julia, yes. We encourage them to don't take care of them a lot. Like, I used to do that. And I, as you say, I'm not feel like guilty. Of course, I would, I would love to do different things, but I can go back. <laughs> yeah. But I can see uh, Sometimes I was very worried, like my kids go to bed in certain time, like, okay, they need to go at bed at eight. They cannot go to bed eight one. They need to be in bed at eight. That's it. Because we were very controlling, right? So eight. No, numbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> numbers, numbers. So if they fell asleep during the day, I was freaking out because that will be but the, like moving the hour to bed in the night. So I will go wake them up. You <laughs> cannot sleep. You cannot sleep because the time is eight. And I don't want you to be awake eight thirty. And I I used to be like make fun of myself in that moment. Like at seven thirty I'm turned in a witch. I will tell them that. So I so I don't want to be mean with you. So hurry up because 7.30, I'm turning in another month. I am, I'm not have patient. And I will tell it aloud. And they will know that every time I think in that moment for them, I was like um, a, a witch mom that turns in one day to disappear because I was tired. I was tired of the day. I was tired of being mean. I was tired. I was in, on patient. I was not nourished. I was a crazy mom the last every day the last 30 minutes of the day of my kids i i think it was hell for them honestly and that's so sad <laughs> yeah it it just goes back to how much of your life is affected by an eating disorder it's everything and mm -hmm. i mean i do as you said earlier, I really don't want anybody who is a parent who does have an eating disorder to be feeling really, really bad about this, to be saying, oh, I should, I should, I should, I should, because it's not your fault. You didn't ask to have an eating disorder. You're doing the very best you can. But this is a cue, a uh, a signal for you to 
ask for help to get out of the eating disorder because it's affecting your life. It's affecting your children's lives. Even if you are doing the very, very, very best you can to not let it affect, they see you. They see you putting yourself last. They see you not meeting any of your needs. They will be wondering why when you're making them the nourishing, healthy lunch and you sit next to them while they eat, why isn't mummy having food? They see it. They see everything. And it all goes in. So please do get some help because you don't have to stay stuck and you do have needs that you can meet. Yes, and I would say we are not like promoting a should be because it's not actually, it's, it's a why. Why? It's, don't put shoulds on you. Put yes. questions on you. Because you have so many shoulds now. You have so many obligations that you put in yourself. Don't put another. Recover is not an obligation. Never is going to be and doesn't work in that way. Mm. And you so cannot be all things. things. Yeah. You can't be all things to all people. Yeah. Ask why. Why I need to recover? Why? What is the reason? And if you are a mother and a dad and you're parenting in any ways, um, you have a reason in front of you. It's you first in the mirror. You are the first reason. But because you are a reason of the other people, remember these little kids, you are the reason in this moment. So that's another reason for you. It's not about being the perfect moment. It's not about be the best. It's just be who you are and show your kids that being who you are with everything, with your shadows, with your bright days, it's amazing because your kids will have shadows and will be bright and they will be able to encourage life with the whole they are in all the soul, in all the body, in all everything, every part of them will be strong and they yes. could be could be, um, yeah, be the life that they want to be because that is what they saw on you. Mm -hmm. And recovering from an eating disorder is the most difficulty that you will experience, yes, but will be the most rich and amazing and brightly experience that you can show to your kids. And you can allow your children to help you in your recovery because they've spent their little lives being loved and looked after by you. And if you give them an opportunity to show you love and help look after you, they will, it will make their hearts sing because yeah. they naturally want to look after you they want to love you they want to show you and I mean my kids were I yes they are adults now but they were so helpful in recovery and my youngest was like the food please to be quite honest he would sit down with me and be like mum you know what do you remember when I was a toddler and you used to make the airplane noises if you don't eat that I'm gonna <laughs> gonna get the fork and I'm gonna aeroplane it to your mouth <laughs> and he brought humor in he brought humor into my recovery in those moments where I was so scared to eat and those moments where I felt so vulnerable having him there and bringing the humor in and allowing him to be there to be helping me and to be supporting me it meant the world to me and it meant the world to him. Yes. Because I'm not perfect and my kids now know I'm not perfect and they know they don't have to be perfect. In fact, they're probably a lot more relaxed and a lot less anxious now that permission to be human has been given Yes, that's amazing. Oh my God, permission to be human. That's yes, that's permission to I be think imperfect I and that. human. Yeah, because and, and celebrating wins with you. 
And your children celebrated when you grew out of sick clothes, didn't they, with you? Yes, they they celebrate. They are encourage. They will encourage me a lot. As as your kids, they they were sitting with me. They were like, "Oh, mom, oh well." They were so lovely. Everything in their different personalities. They will be very very close to me and like always asking, "How do you feel, mom?" Like bring me things to the school, throwing me things for me and tell me beautifully like, oh, mama, I love you. Um, You look so pretty all the time. Like, mom, I, I don't know, like, just to having them and not for first time to hide myself from them because I was hiding myself from them all my life and all my struggles. Now when I tell them, it was like a liberty I said at the beginning. It was freedom for me because I wasn't hiding. I, I don't have to put everything aside. And now they really know what mom it was. It was it was in front of them who I was in my yeah. complete sense. I was that was so amazing. And now they our now they know me better. And as you say before, and and I love it give them permission to have mistakes, give them yes. permissions to be themselves, give them permission to say to yourself, no, I don't want to be that. And you'll be okay as a, as a mom say, okay, I need to respect sometimes the, the decisions, right? I need to let them go. I need to, don't have to control. And that was really difficult. It is really difficult still. And I think I'm still learning that part. Um, which I love it. <laughs> I love it. And it's very hard. I mean, sometimes I call you and you are not going to. Um, <laughs> I call you say, Julia, I feel so bad. <laughs> that <laughs> happens to me and Julia because she's uh, my guidance in motherhood because she has uh, grown up. She said, okay, that's okay. And she she's very helpful also. But um, yes, having them next to you in your yeah. process. It will be encourage you in all senses and make your process not easy but more more nourished more more warm more secure one of the huge fears i had when i started recovery was because my mind decided that i was going to get fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter and never stop getting fat because everybody thinks that in the early recovery i thought my children would be so embarrassed to have this big fat mum, mm -hmm. and the eating disorder made that a really good reason why i shouldn't recover yes and number one no one gets fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter forever it doesn't happen mm -hmm. and number two my children do not care about my body size they could not give a stuff all they care about is that they actually have a mum that is present that is happy that is living life That's my body size doesn't matter to them there's no embarrassment but that was just eating disorder thoughts yes it is true my kids looks at me now they told me i don't know if they have that dot in that moment but we used to see pictures from me before with them and my oldest say mom you look like you have a illness in that moment you look very sick i'm so happy that you look in the, like in this way and it's not about looking uh it's not about it the, but they notice and i i wonder if they thought i was sick in, sick in that moment or it was having an illness because yeah, now we joke about that, which is like joking, like, oh, when you was uh, really ill, you look like that and make jokes. But yes, they notice how different you look and they don't care about how much weight. They look like your bright, your smile, your skin, everything changes your, your ability to really connect with them. It's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My boys were the they're young men and they're all bigger than me um, as in height and everything. And one of them said to me, he's quite, he gives me lots of hugs. He's very nice. He's lovely. Actually, all my boys are lovely. 
But he said, I never used to want to hug you, mum, because I was always scared I was going to break you. Mm. Which is so sad, isn't it? So mm. now he feels happy to hug me because I'm not going to break. Yeah. And a mama is going to be forever. I mean, it's not going to be forever, but he's going to be there for. Can yeah. you imagine that dog in in the when he was, I don't know, not little, but maybe teenager in that moment, and be worried about you with that unconscious, right? Because maybe it wasn't in his conscious, but like, my mom is going to broken. Yeah. Yes, yes. So that's another reason. It's not to be sad. It's another reason to go and see. Okay, even when you when you thought your kids didn't care about how you look, it's not about they care. They care about you that you are yeah. safe, that you are healthy, mm -hmm. and in some way, because we are human beings, we know when someone is not okay, yes. even if you are young. So. Your kid can't express it right now, but maybe they notice that something is not okay with you. Yeah. And they will help you because they are really help people. We are we have that in our we blood. want to help people we love, right? Well, yes. That's natural being. <laughs> they will help you. They will help you. I mean, I know it could be some doubts that I'm afraid to tell them. I am afraid to to tell my family to open this conversation. But what I can tell you, like one time you did, is not that go back. And they will be so supportive in so many ways, especially your kids. Uh, especially then they will be, oh my gosh, it's and going to make a difference. Even be a very young child, you can say that mummy's got an illness that makes food seem scary can you help me be big and brave like you and they will because they want to so you can say things age appropriately yes yes yeah and yeah, children yeah. understand that people get sick that people fall over and hurt their knees so they they can understand that mummy's brain's got sick and it's made food seem scary and they need help to be big and brave and strong And so, you give them permissions to be sick too, right? Yes. And, and tell you one time when they need your help, mom, I'm feeling sick. Ma I don't feel good in my mind because, yeah. I mean. It opens the mind, conversation, doesn't it? The conversation and make, make the life not easy, but more more connected to themselves. It's allowed yeah. them to feel their bodies. It's allowed them to tell, I'm not feeling well. It's allowed them to, you know, mom, I feel scared. You know, mom, I don't feel well. Yeah. And that's amazing because if you were, or if we were in the eating disorder right now, or if, yeah, we cannot allow to our kids to make kids to be teenagers, to be adults in all that, in all the meaning that it is. How would you say your relationship with your children is now you're recovered? I know they're teenagers, which makes them kind of <laughs> tricky anyway, but apart from the fact they're scary teenagers. Well, I can sit with them in the table now. I have fork and a spoon, like they have fork and a spoon. I have a plate in the table now. I can have a conversation. I can eat uh, with them. I can go out and not freaking out where we are going to be. I can be in a restaurant with them. I can. Now I am the same size that my girls, which is amazing because even that is like something very external, that's impacting them. Now I can go shopping with them and be in the same in the same section of them, not looking for kid clothes because I used to wear kids clothes, size kid clothes. Now I go with them and fine i have fun with them i am um, can go to the movie theater and sit and not be stressed about i had to stand up because it's you can't sit that <laughs> long <laughs> yeah, i can sit that long i can watch a movie with them and come like yeah. it's totally different it's experience Very like ice cream you can just an be a person that's present and yeah. not anxious all the time Yes, and I can cry, like, yeah. 
for no reason. <laughs> Sometimes I would say, I would say, okay, I'm sad. I, I need to cry. I need to do this. I can go to bed even before them, which is very yeah. hard. For, it used to be very I hard. Think, I, I go to bed to go before to bed. all my children. <laughs> yeah. Now it's like, okay, I'm tired. I'm going to bed. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I can go and sit down in the daytime and say, I'm tired, I need to have a rest. Yes. And that's okay. And I'm showing them that that's okay. Yes. And I can say no to them too. In yeah. so many ways without feeling guilty. <laughs> yes. The guilt, that's huge. Not yes. having the guilt over everything all the time. Yes. Because that's such a big part of living in an eating disorder, isn't it? Just guilt, guilt, guilt. It's yes. Gone. It's gone. It's gone. And if they want to knock my door, I say, like, you know what? I'm not. You're not going to let you in. It's okay. You can stay out. Thank you. I, I, I was about to say in something, but I felt like, yeah, the tiredness is something important because we are allowed to be tired and they and we allow them to be tired too. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's experience life with them a lot more, like more than ever. And I'm so happy to have that opportunity to really live this moment with them without these lenses. Yes. And see the life in full colors, in full colorful. It's amazing. I think I have I have a better relationship with my children. I would, wouldn't say I'd ever had a bad relationship with them, but now we have great conversations. And they open up to me and they tell me of their worries and I tell them of mine. And I'm present in the conversations now. I'm not off in my head somewhere worrying about the next thing that I need to be doing and what people are going to think. Yes. And so my ability to now be present with them has just enabled the whole relationship dynamic to just become so much deeper and so much more beautiful. Yeah. And now um, I wondering like, because they are not um, with you or they, they still live with you. One. Only one still lives. Only one. Um, they, they come with questions with you, like questions about your eating disorder or about yes. your life. They come with questions still. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, we can talk openly and honestly and they also know that they can come to me now with anything and there's not going to be any judgment yeah that's that's so sweet i have a space and have you in this because every stage is important right and now they are having their own lives it's so amazing to have this mom completely completely for them in the space like i know you obviously we talk about boundaries and everything but what i mean what i mean is like they have you they really have you and they yes. really have you to support them in their own struggles and they know that they like make a mistake you will be there because you also can make me like make mistakes all the time yeah that and that that's wonder that's amazing because allow them to make mistakes and now allow, allow you say to talk about your own mistakes to them yeah it's makes the, take out the pressure of the life it's again it's back to permission to be human yes it's Isn't amazing it? it is amazing well carla I am yeah. going to have to wrap this up cuz i know honestly we could talk for hours couldn't we it, I mean, we can talk <laughs> hours and maybe 10 episodes of podcast, <laughs> <laughs> but maybe the people will be very, very boring about it. <laughs> so but what about if they have some questions, they can write it to us. Absolutely. Totally. Um, we love questions. Yes. We love them. But I just like to kind of wrap it up from my side, just to say everyone has permission to be human you don't need to be perfect yes you can't be perfect because part of the human condition is imperfection and you don't need to try so hard to be perfect and it's 
the strongest thing you will ever, ever do is to say help. Yeah. Yes. Reach out if you want help. Reach out to Carla, reach out to me, reach out to friends, family, but Any. ask for help. You can do it. Yes. Believe me. And I will rather to maybe just say like, I know being a mom is difficult. Being a mom with an eating disorder is harder, but you are also allowed, allow yourself to be that mom, sick mom that needs help. It's very important because being a mom, being, uh, being, being a parent, it's not like you take all your necessities away and just take that role in this moment of the life. Your life continue and you will have to face all that fears, face all that worries. Um, but it's easy when you do it with support next to you. It's easy when so someone supporting you. And as Julia said, could be me, could be Julia, could be any other coach, could be a psychologist, but also could be your family. I mean, don't let yourself alone if you cannot reach to anyone outside of your family, use a friend, talk, talk, talk about your eating disorder. That's help to eating disorder to start disappear and to start to make more room to yourself. Your kids, your family needs you completely. And just there's no you. shame in needing help. Not shelf, no. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening. And I'm so grateful. And mm -hmm. Carla, I just love chatting to you. I loved you, Julia. You are amazing. I love you. And as you say, I, you are my, I mean, I know the people that you're listeners, um, they will be agree with me. I mean, your voice is always like, oh, I bring so much peace from myself. I can hear you um, be in my couch and fell asleep. And have so beautiful <laughs> dreams because your voice is so amazing. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. So, I'm going to end this recording. So thank you so much, listeners. Thank Send you. Gracias. You so much love. Gracias, gracias a todos los que nos escucharon. Besos. Bye.